So, Father, we come to you this morning, and we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather here. As we gather around your precious word, Lord, help it to edify us, Lord. I just want to pray over the people here. I pray over those that are gathering together in Brawley in the Spanish church, and I pray over those that are gathering here in Hopeville across town, our Spanish congregation, that you would bless and be with them, that you would reveal yourself to all of us, that our hearts would be prepared to receive something from you today. Bless this offering that we may use it to further your kingdom, and we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. So I seen that video, I saw that video a couple years ago. I think it's six or seven years old maybe now. I think it was 2016 when it came out. And it just touched my heart, man. That, you know, the, I hope after you see that, you'll never take the word of God for granted again. Many of us have a Bible laying on our coffee table that's got dust on it or whatever the case may be. And these folks have been, you know, God said every native tongue and language will, will have an opportunity to know his word. And you see them wiping away the tears as the Lord brought them the word of God, the New Testament, right? Let us never take for granted the word of God. And we're just grateful and thankful for Kimberly and that little baby there that was born healthy. <laughs> we're going to be doing a baby dedication in the future, here in the future. And uh, so if you have a child you want to dedicate, uh, that's just... In doing that, you're saying you want to raise your child up in the things of the Lord, and you're going to be a good parent, et cetera, et cetera. We'll, we can talk about that. We're going to do that here in the future. But we're going to talk about just studying the Word, just loving the Word today as we, we continue in this Just Do It series. There's some things as Christians that you just have to do. Many of you have a 9-to-5 job, and you go to that 9-to-5 job, and there might be things about that job that you don't like, but there's just some things that you just have to do, and you do it. Well, there's some things in your walk with the Lord that you're just going to have to do to, to truly become one of his disciples and to grow and mature and to have fruit in your life. There's some things that you have to do. Jesus has went to the cross. He's been given you the opportunity to do these things. And if you want to change and you want to be different, you got to do them. I know some people that got saved and they never did anything and they didn't change much. Their address for eternity might have changed. But them themselves didn't change a whole lot. And the purpose of us becoming a disciple is to produce another disciple. The purpose of you getting saved is the one day that you can take and lead someone to Christ and they can get saved. The purpose is to grow and mature in the things of the Lord so that you can be different. People see you different. You might be the only Bible that some people read. Some people will never go to church. They'll never crack open the word, but they'll watch you and watch your life. And by the way you live it, you can lead people to Christ just through that. It's happened in my life and my own family. Nehemiah 8, 1 through 3. All the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly which was made up of men and women, all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men and women and others who could understand. And all the people listened intently to the book of the law. So from daybreak to noon means for five or six hours. He brought the law out. He broke it open. And he read it to the people. That was the word of God then, right? The law, right? That's what they had. That's what they read. If you go in verse 5, it says, Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. He had made a platform that he was standing on, kind of like this, to where he was a little bit above the people. As he opened it, the people stood. So Ezra gets up with the law. He cracks it open, the people stand. How long did he read the law? Five or six hours. Aren't you grateful for those comfortable, comfortable seats that you're sitting in here today in, right? I mean, that's reverence for the Lord. He cracked it open, they stood up in reverence for five or six hours. It was such a privilege to gather and hear God's word. They were honored to be able to gather and hear it, right? Nehemiah 8.8, 8. they read from the book of the law, God making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. And that's what's happening today. That's what's happening all across 
this valley and this globe today, pastors are doing the best of their ability. They're going to share a word with you. In many churches today, there's a pastor sharing a word. And what he's going to do to the best of his, his ability is help you to understand that word. So you can take it and apply it to your life, right? Verse 9, then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra, the priest, and the teacher of the law, and the Levites, who were instructing the people, said to them all, oh, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people have been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. So they wept even as they heard the word. The word brought a deep conviction to them. As they heard the word of God and they lined their life up against that word, they were deeply, uh, they wept because they, were, they, were, they had deep conviction. That word convicted them of the way they were living their life. The same thing should happen here when you come here. You should come in here and you should leave here thinking, man, I need to change that in my life. If you come to church and you never leave there thinking anything, you're either in the wrong church or your heart's just so hardened. We should always leave here with some kind of conviction of something that we need to change, right? It brought a deep conviction of their sin. Therefore, they wept because they knew their sin separated them from God. And that's what our sin does. I would ask you, when you hear the word, does it convict you? I believe that's why, my personal belief, you don't have to agree with it, but I believe why a lot of people steer away from the word is because it, they don't want to have to deal with the conviction in their life. I believe for a while people will come to church, and then after a while some, I've known of some that just stopped coming because they couldn't deal with the conviction. Someone stopped coming to this church because they told someone because my sermons were uh, wrote around their life. Tibby's nodding her head because she knows who's it, who it is. That I was picking on them. That every time they came here, the sermon was for them. Well, man, I would be thanking God if I was in for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I got better things to do than stalk you around and find out what you're doing in life. I might watch your news feed on, on, on Facebook and see, you know, what's going on with you. But I'm not creeping around your house, lurking in the shadows, trying to get a sermon out of you. She should have been thanking God she was in a church that brought about conviction in her life. Amen. It's a she. I told her that you did? I Praise the Lord. And therefore, not coming anymore. Trust me, there's been times that I sat on that side of the, of the pulpit and, man, the word of God was for me. I th I'd leave there thanking the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You knew what I needed to hear today. I got spanked. I'll get spanked up here preaching. The Lord will spank me. Some of the things that comes out of my mouth aren't in my notes, and it's the Lord spanking me along with you. Thank God for that. But we're going to look at Psalms. We touched on this last week, but we're going to look at it this week. Psalms 1. 1. See, the word will keep you from sin. The, the word gets tough sin out. Right? Right? Psalms 1, 1, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or take seat in the company of mockers. So this psalm placed, first, uh, placed a, 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 a blessing right here. Blessed is the one who does not, right? It encourages people to live a godly life. It assures that their obedience will be rewarded. And all through the word of God, we're assured that if you obey this, you'll receive this. Oh, blessing always follows obedience in God's word. And it's starting off, the, the book of Psalms, starting it off with it right here. Blessed is the one who does not. See, sometimes there's a blessing if you do, and then sometimes there's a blessing if you don't. A blessing if you do something, and then there's a blessing if you don't do something. But there's always a blessing for being obedient. Always a blessing for obeying God's word, right? Who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or, or sit in the company of mockers. You know why you're blessed? If you don't do those things? Because what's the opposite of those things? Fellowship with God. The opposite of that which is listed as fellowship with God, that's why you're blessed. If you're not doing the things that the world's doing, then you're, doing, you're in fellowship with the Lord. That's, that, that's why your attention should be drawn there. That's what repentance is, a change of mind, a change of direction in your life. 
You repent from those things and you head a different direction, right? If you do the things listed in that verse, it'll keep you in, uh, out of fellowship with God. If you hang out with the sinners and the mockers and all that, you're not going to be in fellowship with God doing that. That's why you're blessed if you don't do that. You spend your time seeking the Lord. Uh, blessed can be, uh, could be also oh so happy. Oh so happy is the man that does not do these things. That's one translation of blessed. Oh so happy. Oh, so happy you can be if you don't hang out with mockers, if you don't hang out with sinners, if you don't do the things that the world does. Maybe some of us can't experience the true joy in Christ because we're hanging around with the wrong people. What does the scripture say? Bad company corrupts what? We all know that person who had good character. We all know somebody. And they got the men leave the home, for example, doing good for a while. And then they get around that bad company and it starts rubbing off on them. And then when they're doing that, they're not seeking the things of the Lord. They're not blessed because their attention is going here instead of turning to Jesus. So there's no blessing now. And boom, there goes their character. Be careful who you're hanging around. Some of you shouldn't hang around your own family. I know you don't want to hear that, but it's just the truth. Psalms 2, or 1-2. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. See, because of your relationship with God, you take delight in other things now. We used to, to delight in the things of the world before Jesus, right? But now whose delight is in the law of the Lord? Other things accompany your time, and they should. You, you spend more time coming to church now. You spend more time reading your word. You spend more time in fellowship. You spend more time doing the things that grow your relationship with God. Then you do hanging out with the sinners and the mockers in the world. And you should take great delight in that. And the Lord takes great delight in that. And that will bring great joy in your life because your joy comes from the Lord. Amen. I was unhappy for 36 years of my life. I had money, had things, was unhappy. Never had joy. Never was satisfied in that area of my life. But once I got right with the Lord, oh, man, there's a joy. That no matter what you're going through, that you know God's in, in, in control no matter what. That everything's going to be okay. That I just have to walk according to his word. That he will see me through whatever the circumstance or situation may be. There's great joy in that. See, since you're not walking with the wicked, you're spending time doing godly things like reading his word. And the delight just doesn't come from knowing or studying or memorizing the word. The delight comes from doing the word. That's where the joy comes from. That's where the delight comes through. When you can walk that word out in your life. When you know that you're sacrificing, hey, I'm sacrificing this relationship with the world and I'm focusing on the one who sacrificed for me. Right? And you're going to walk that thing out. It's one thing to know the word. It's another thing to do the word and to take it and apply it to your life. Delight comes from allowing the word to change you from the inside out. And that's what it does. Delight comes when you have taken what you have read and you have put it to practice. Delight comes when you're able to love, to forgive, to be a peacemaker. All because the word has gotten down in you and changed you. It's the word that will change you. It's the word of God that will keep these men the, the next year, two years, three years, or four or five years out of the home. It's the word of God that will keep them. It ain't nothing that Turning Point did for them. Some of them might come here and get saved, and we'll see in about a year or two if that was genuine. Because they'll be in their word, and their life will be transformed by the word of God. It's the word of God that transforms. Ephesians 5.26, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Her is the church. Her is you and me. The word washes away the world. The, wor the word washes it away. It renews the mind. It changes the heart. That's why it's so important when you spend your day out there rubbing elbows with the wor uh, world that you come home and read the word. Amen. That you start your day off with the word. Maybe end it with the word. It's, it's what renews, it's, it's what washes us clean. 
the Word of God. No matter how I'm thinking or how crazy this mind may get sometimes, right? The flesh, right? I can open up the Word and start reading it. And man, by the time I'm done, I'm thinking different. Right? The Word snaps me back to where I need to be. Puts my focus back where it needs to be. Pleasing God and God's will for my life. And then we got folks that go a day, two days, three days without reading the Word. Or they, they might come to church twice a week and that's their Word. And they're spiritually starved to death. And their flesh is taken over. And as a son, we had one person that was here last uh, week. It took him eight, nine years to fall away, but he fell away. Because he wasn't in his word. You've got to be in the word, folks. And the odds are there's people here who aren't. Or God wouldn't bring this up as a topic, right? Start today. Make the difference today in that. You could change that today. And all that happens, all that change will come and everything happens because you get rooted in the Word. I've been rooted in the Word is why my life is different. Not that I am perfect, but my life is different. I handle things differently now. It's because the Word is in me. And the Word tells me, oh, you can forgive that person no matter what they do to me. You can love that person no matter what they've done to you. You could do, you could do, you could do because God's Word says it. And if His Word says it, I quote Billy Graham, then I believe it. And if it was for Billy Graham, it's for me. It's for you. One, three. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yield its fruit in season and whose leaves do not wither. Whatever they do prospers. That person who's grounded in the word. That person who's walked away and doesn't focus on the wicked. That person who is truly repentant has turned to God and is hanging out with Jesus. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water. See, here's the deal. You can't get rooted in anything. You can't get rooted into the Word until you first what? Get planted. I got to plant a plant before it bears roots. You got to make the time. You got to set the time aside to be in the Word. What you do, it'll, you'll get rooted in it. It'll become part of your everyday life. You, you will feel like you're leaving your house, house without a garment on if you don't read your Word that morning. You won't feel right. It's one of the best habits to have in the morning is getting in the Word of God. That's being planted in the Word, right? The Word should be a part of your everyday life. It said they're planted by streams of water. So there's always nourishment, which yields its fruit in season. Your words and actions are timely and wise. So that Word that's been put in you 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 2 months ago is going to come out in season. I had a conversation with a gentleman this morning at 6 o'clock, been in ministry for 25, 30 years. Wise man. But man, he called me from, for, some, for a word. He said, I, I need to talk to you. I need a word. I need some direction. God had, had a word for him. We had a conversation. He's going to call me back this afternoon and we'll, we'll, we'll carry it on. But, I mean, it's in me. Why what wouldn't he call me? Why wouldn't I be qualified? Why would he have to call someone else? I've been in my word, and he knows it, and he says, I trust you. That's a way better reputation than I used to have. <laughs> Terry, Terry, Terry's back there laughing. She knows. Praise God. Yeah, he, he, God gets the glory. He gets the glory. All because of his word. You got to treat his word like the tribal people did right there in that video. It's a privilege, man. It's an honor. It'll change you from the inside out. Whose leaves do not wither. See, your spiritual life will only grow and mature. The more you stay in the word, it'll just won't wither. You'll just boom, you'll get strong in the Lord. Right? Whatever they do prospers. And that's the blessing. That's the blessing of living in fellowship with God. And you will not, and you cannot be in fellowship with, with God without being a lover of his word. You cannot, it, it, you just can't. Whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. What are you thinking about? What do you take delight in? 
See, when you read the Word in the morning, you've got something to chew on all day. Get up and do your little devotion, your, your prayer time, read your Word before you head out. You've got something to meditate on, even if it's a Scripture or a passage. What do you take delight in? Is it the things of the world? Or is it the law of the Lord? You're either delighting in one or the other. What do you take delight in? You've got to remember the blessing comes from separating ourselves from the world. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. And I'm here to tell you, in case you haven't realized it, the world is a wicked place. And it's getting more wicked and more wicked. God's Word tells us not to love the world or anything in the world. So what's going to keep you separate? What's going to keep you on the right path? Is the Word. The Word of God. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on His law day and night. And just like James puts it in 122, do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. See, it's not enough just to hear the Word. It's not enough just to come to church. It's not enough just to read your Bible. You must apply it to your lives. You've got to take it. You've got to say, Lord, I'm reading your word today. Help me to apply it to my life, Lord. Help me to walk this thing out in my life. Help me to be, let this word be alive and well in me. There should never be a time when you go to Scripture without allowing them to change your life for the better. There should never be a time that you open up that Bible with, and not allow it. Always prepare your heart before, Lord, I'm opening up this word. Help it to change me, Lord. Always say a little prayer before I read the word. And, and, and there's people that just open it out of a sense of duty. Got to read my word today because I'm a Christian and the Bible says I need to read it. Da, 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 and just buzz through it. And then there's no evidence of them reading the word because they didn't take it seriously. They, they did it out of a Christian duty, right? There's got to be a deep desire to hear God speaking to you and a willingness to do whatever he says. That's where the rubber meets the road. When he speaks to you in his word, you got to have a willingness to do it. Forgive, love, whatever it may be. Do whatever his will is revealed to you in his word. You've got to have a willingness to do it. You must. There in 23 through 24, James, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. So don't just read it because uh, it's your duty. You've got to have a deep desire to have the Word change you. You've got to have a deep desire. You've got to go to that Word with, with anticipation of revelation from the Word of God, knowing that that Word of God will change you, your life. It will change your heart. It will change your mind. See, but the problem is there's probably someone sitting here today that don't think they need to, to spend any time in the Word. You think that other things are more important. That's just the odds. And if you get a chance, you might read a little bit. In all reality, that should be the first thing that you do. If you came into this church service today or you tuned in later or you tuned in right now, I pray if you get anything out of this that you will take the Word of God seriously. That you will know that it's bread to your life. Man doesn't live on bread alone, he, uh, Jesus said. But on every word that comes from the mouth of God, that you, it needs to be a part of your daily diet. The Word of God. You will not survive without it. Just like always, there's a blessing. Look at James 1.25. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Right? Looks intently. So the definition of intently is an intent or concentrated manner with great effort, attention, concentration. Looks intently, right? So that's not someone who's taking a quick glance at the Word. Not someone who's just reading a verse and who's done. Not someone just fulfilling some Christian duty. If you're looking intently, man, that's exactly where God has you exactly where you need to be, doing exactly what you need to be doing. You're taking it serious, right? Intently is someone who's prepared their heart. Someone who's excited and expecting to receive something from the Lord. Someone who has taken the word and applied it to their life. 
Someone who has experienced the blessing of being obedient to the word. Someone who meditates on that word day and night. That's someone who's looking at it intently. How many times have you read your word and then it never crossed your mind again? That day. we got to be careful. Who looks into the perfect law that gives freedom? We know it's perfect because it's God's word. And when you obey his word, it'll set you free. It'll set you free. I don't have the same chains of bondage in my life that I had anymore. I've been free. I've been delivered. John 8, 31 says, To the Jews who believed him, Jesus said, If you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciple. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You are really my disciple. See, there's a lot of people that say they're a disciple, but Jesus knows who are truly, really his disciples. If you hold on to my teaching. So he's saying here, if you continue in it, if you stay grounded in the word. And what's the fruit of that? You are really my disciples. That's the fruit. Jesus knows, right? A disciple is someone that's grounded in the word. It says, then you'll know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And the the truth of the word of God is revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. You'll read it and God will reveal. I've been through the New Testament thousands of times and I continue to go through it and God continues to reveal to me things that I didn't know, haven't got, haven't gleaned, didn't see. Continues to reveal. He'll always fulfill that hunger that that you have, right? So like I said, I'm not free because I came to the men's home. I'm not free because I come to church. I'm free because I've continued in his word. I've looked intently into his word. And that's the key to keeping those chains off. Many of us have the chains broken in our life. We got saved and those chains were broken. We, set, we were set free. And then we were required to do a few things. Not, not that you got to work it to get your salvation, but faith without works is what? Dead, right? So once you get saved and once you believe, then you're going to do something. You're going to read the word, you're going to take it, you're going to apply, you're going to do those things. And some of us haven't, and we just went back and put those shackles and those chains right back on. We're in no better shape than we were the moment that we got saved. The key to keeping the chains off is, and he continues in it, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it. They will be blessed in what they do. See, continues in it, that's where being faithful comes into play. You got to be faithful, especially when it comes to the Word of God. See, when you get saved is when you begin your walk with the Lord. And there's some things you got to do. You just got to do it to grow. You just got to do it. There's some things to, that you got to do to grow. And one of them is getting in the Word and staying in the Word. And the purpose of that is so that you will grow spiritually. There's a lot of people that have been saved for 15 or 20 years that haven't grown a lick. They can say they said a prayer. They can remember the date and the time and the place. And that's it. They haven't grown a lick. Because they haven't gotten in the word and gotten grounded in the word. And their lives probably may not be a whole lot different. Because it's a word that changes you. Make sure you're not one of those people, right? The getting in and the doing it is what it's going to bring change in your life. It's what brings the blessing into your life. They will be blessed in what they do, the scripture said. And you know why they'll be blessed? Because their life will be different. They don't act the same. They don't speak, speak the same. They don't treat people the same. That's a blessing. I'm blessed not to act the way that I used to act. Treat people the way that I used to treat them. I got some flaws and some work to do. Yeah, we all do. But man, I'm blessed not to be the person that I used to be. 17 and a half years ago, got a long way to go though, so I need to have my face in that word every day. Study. I study the word to share with you, but then I study the word on my own for myself. Right? For, for I can grow. You put yourself in position to be blessed. It said it in Psalms, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season. Whose leaves do not wither, whatever they do prospers. Are you that person? Have you put yourself in position to be blessed? 
Have you been grounded and stayed grounded in the word? Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And we know obedience to God's will is the test of true faith in Christ. Obedience to God's will. And we know God's will is revealed in his word. So this verse is probably for those who have gotten saved, you know, said a prayer on 1979, June 9th, man, I got saved. And thought they were all right. Speaking to so-called believers here. Remember, he knows who his disciples are. He knows. uh, 22 through 23, Matthew 7. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons in your name and and perform miracles? Then I will plainly, I'll tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Nowadays, you might hear, oh, Lord, I taught Sunday school. Oh, Lord, I I ushered in the church. Oh, Lord, I gave 25% in the offering. Not 10, Lord, but I gave I gave 25. Or I fed the homeless or whatever the case may be. See, the works don't build a relationship. Build, being in the Word and getting to know Him and His will for your life, that's what brings about true discipleship. Right? That's what brings about true discipleship. Look at Matthew 7. It's a verse that we use all the time here, but it applies today. Therefore, if anyone hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, he is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the, storm, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock which is the word of God. What is your foundation built on? There's that but. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rain came down, the storms rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. See, it's not just hearing the word that builds the foundation. It's being a doer of the word that builds the foundation. It's applying the word of God to your life. I was telling my wife the other day, my soul, my flesh wants to, wants to keep reminding me that our, how our son's gone now, right? And it wants to bring me to a place of sadness, which we all mourn and all that. But then my spirit reminds me through the word where our son is. See, the flesh will want to take me here. And see, if I didn't have the word or the spirit leading and guiding me, if I didn't have all, know all the promises of God and his word that talks about heaven and this and that, if I didn't have all that stored in my heart, man, I would be down in the pity party. So every time my flesh wants to remind me of something sad, then in my spirit I say, oh, well, Lord, your word says. Right? Because it's in me. If it's not in you, you'll get beat up when you go through things in life. You've got to have it in you. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, day in, day out, right? Not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Psalm said it, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. When you delight in the word of God, you're building the proper foundation. You should take great joy. As those folks had great joy in receiving it, Man, you should have great joy when you get the chance every day to crack that thing open and get some, some bread for life. There's no better place to go. There's no better place to be than when your nose in your Bible. It's the only true thing in this world, the Word of God. I would encourage you to get planted in it, right? Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is a wise man who builds his house on the rock. So every time you meditate on the Word, every time you put it to practice, you lay the proper foundation. You love when it's not easy to love. You forgive when you think it's impossible to forgive. You just do. It's natural. And it's not a hard thing. You get offended and you just forgive. Because God forgave. Jesus forgave, right? You do these things because of the word. Look at Acts 6. One through four. 
In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the holistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because of their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn these responsibilities over to them and we'll give them instructions, uh, give them a, our attention to prayer and ministry of the word. Certain people can take care of certain things, right? But the word needs to never be neglected. It needs to always be the focus of our ministry, the center of our ministry. It's great to give out food and help the needy, but that shouldn't come before the word. We give out food boxes on Christmas. What do we do first? We minister the word. Christ Community, every Friday they have a, a, a food thing over there where they feed the people. What do they do first? They hear the word. Pastor Rudy and them, when they go to outreach, yeah, they feed people. But what do they have to sit down and listen to first? The word. Paul told Timothy, just preach the word. You can never go wrong just preaching the word, folks. Whatever scripture you know, share it with somebody. You can never go wrong. You're just gathering, spreading seed. And there's the four soils that it's in the book there. You can read about them. And there's different soils, and they might land on different soil. But, man, if you can get something to land on that good ground, you've done your job. Someone else will come along and water it and tend to it, right? But just go out there and scatter it. If you don't know any word, you can't scatter any seed. 1 Peter 1, 23, you have been born again, not by perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. So a new birth is brought through the word. It's the word that reveals man's sin to them, right? It's the word that tells you where you're at with the Lord. It's the word that reveals the payment for that sin. And it's the word that shows man how we're supposed to live. It's all in the word. Basic instructions before leaving earth, the Bible. Everything that you need to live your life is within the cover of that book that's laying in some of your laps. Everything that you need to the living and enduring word of God. If you're not a lover of the word, it's not alive and active in your life. Hebrews says it in 4.12, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing soul, spirits, joints, and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. See, as you read it and apply it to your life, you're, you, you come alive on the inside. You see the word and, and that judges the heart. As we read it, it shows us how wicked we can be. That's why it's important that we come into agreement with the word. That's why it's important to read it so that you can come into agreement with it, so that you can take correction from it and make those changes in your life to line you up with God's will for your life. So don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer. For some of us, the word's not alive and active, and it doesn't change. Uh, that could change today for some of us. Some of us haven't taken the word as serious as we need to be or need to. Today could be the day that you make that change in your life, right? Don't be that person. Allow the word to change you from the inside out. Let the word uh, uh, be as Psalms 119.105 says, Let, uh, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. See, if you allow the, world, uh, the word to light your path, you'll never stumble. Some of us have been walking in darkness too long because the word is not a priority in our life. The whole purpose of this message today is to encourage you to what? Love what? Say it real loud. Love what? The word. The word. Be a lover of the word. Be a doer of the word. We're going to say goodbye to those on Facebook. We're going to ask you all to stand. We're going to close with one song, and then I'll come up and pray. The altar will be open if you want to come and get with the Lord. If you haven't been in the word like you should, come and get with him today and get that right in your life and keep it right. Amen?
Say. 